Hey there, Maxwell designers and creators. Hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Pilot, and I'm back again today with a very new video. And in this video, we are going to be taking a look at all the new features released in the May 2018 update for Adobe PXD. There is a lot to cover in this video, so sit back, relax, and without any further ado, let's get started. All right guys, before we get started, I just wanted to quickly make an announcement saying that I recently got access to channel memberships. So if you guys are interested in supporting me, my channel and the content that I put out, definitely do consider becoming a channel member. I've got some certain perks over here that you guys can get benefit from if you become a member. You get exclusive discount to my Udemy courses, you get access to my private design channel on Discord, and you will also get a shout out in my videos. So definitely do check it out if you guys are interested. Okay, here I'm in Adobe XT and this is version 19 so let's get started so the first one is about components now for all those of you who have used only adobe xd in the assets panel we have colors character styles and components before it's called symbols but now it's called components and there's a reason why it's called a component which is what i'm going to show you right now so let's say i have this button over here and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and create make it a component so i can right click and then i can choose Make component now the thing that you see here is a green color diamond which says that this is the master component and that component is going to come over here now i'm going to hold on alter option my keyboard hold down shift and drag to make another copy and this time on this you don't see the diamond you, here but here you see the diamond that's because this is the first element that i made a component and this is a duplicate or a copy of that also called as an instance to the component. So if I ha hold, come over here, you can see that it says two instances. So what's the difference? Why do they call that a component? Now, here is the thing. So let's go ahead and I come over here and I click on this button and I change the color of this from blue to red. You see that this did not change because in the earlier version when everything was a symbol, each symbol was interconnected to itself. So what I mean, is if I change this one to red, this also would change to red. But the reason this is not changing is because this is the master component and I have overridden the properties of the master component in this instance. So any changes I make to the instance, which is basically the second copy or the third copy or the fourth copy of the master component does not affect the master component. Now, if I go ahead, let's make another copy over here. All right, and if I go change the color of this master component to let's say, green it's going to affect the instance because this is the master and this is the instant now this is how components work in other tools like figma and sketch so it is bound they made that same pattern of other softwares work well work for adobe xd as well so that's why it's now called components now the reason it's not changing here is because i've already made changes to this so this has become like a new separate component but if i go ahead and make changes to this such as the width that also changes here as well. The reason it's changing here is because I have not changed the properties of the width of the element, but I've changed only the color of the component. Now, if you wanna change the text, what's gonna happen? I can go ahead and change, change it to review. I can go ahead and change this to cancel. And as you can see, that's going to override the text here as well. But the instance is definitely the element that can be overridden. So I can say, continue over here and that's not going to affect the master. So you want to make sure that you have the master component on a separate artboard, all the master components together, because if you make a change to the master component, it's definitely going to change the instance. But if you change the instance, it is not going to affect the master. So that's something that you need to know. All right, guys, this is the second feature. And this is really pretty awesome, you know, to be honest, because when you understand what this does, it's going to blow your mind. So here I have an element. So basically I have, let me show you, I have one group and then I have this background. So I'm gonna select all this and I'm gonna press Control G, which makes it into one group. And I'm gonna press Control K or Command K to make it into a component. As you can see, oh, here we have a component. Now, this is the master component, as you know. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this group that we have inside. So I can come over here, I can open up this component and I can choose this group and I can set this to fix left, which means when I scale it, it's going to get fixed to the left. Now, let's see what happens when I make a copy of this master component and I'm going to go ahead and scale it, all right? Now, this is the size that would, you would want on a mobile viewport, but this is the size you would want probably on the mobile horizontal or the tablet view. 
but you want this to be in the center. How do you do that? Now, the, the one way to do it is to override it. So you can hold down control, you can click inside and you can move it, but that's a tedious task. We need to use the ability and the magic of responsive resize. Let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this again. All right, and I'm going to scale this, but it doesn't scale the inner part. Now to fix that, this is where the magic happens. You can go to the master component and you can select the object or the group in this case is this three elements. And you can just get rid of the fix left and that's automatically going to go and make the changes as if I had already removed fix left initially before making the instance. All right guys, before we continue, I just wanted to make one quick announcement is if you guys are interested, you can join my new Discord server. Discord is a platform like a chatting app where we talk about design related stuff. We have a bunch of channels for each type of content. You can ask questions, get feedback, share your work and so much more. So definitely do consider checking out. It's completely free. It's available on Mac, Windows, Android and iOS. So it's available on all platforms. Link will be down in the description. The second reason is, is about my new Patreon account. Now with Patreon, you guys can get exclusive perks and benefits. I've got four levels and four tiers. You can subscribe to any one of those and get those benefits such as discount to my Udemy courses, one-on-one -on -one interaction with me, hop on a live video chat, get a portfolio review, get your work reviewed twice a month and so much more. So definitely do check that out. All the links will be down below in the description. All right guys, so the next one is something that everybody has been asking for for a very long time and that is about rulers. Rulers are important when you want to quickly space things and space elements between things without actually checking out the numbers. So rulers come in handy. So the way to create rulers is pretty simple and it's also pretty neat and very cool as well. So if you hover over to the edge, all right, of the artboard, you can see this kind of a new indicator and you can see this kind of a 20% white opacity rectangle, all right? And what you can do is you can go ahead and just drag and then it's gonna create a ruler for you. And the good thing is the smart guides on the top show you the distance and you can go ahead and snap it. And the best part is these snap to the elements and also the elements snap as well. So it's easy to put them and lay them out. Now, it's pretty obvious for them to have it come on the right side as well. But unfortunately, if you want to put it on the right side, you would have to drag it all the way and put it on the right side as well. It's kind of tedious. Um, it would have been nice if I could do it from the bottom as well and the right side. But it looks like for now, you can do it only from the left and the top. So I can go ahead and create one like so. And there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create an artboard. I'm gonna go ahead and create the same size artboard, which is the iPhone XS. And I can go right click on the artboard, go to guides. I can choose copy guides and I can come over here and then I can choose guides and then choose paste guides and the guides are gonna automatically going to be applied. If I have multiple artboards, I can select all the artboards and then just go right click and then go to guides and then choose paste guides. So that's gonna fix the issue. All right guys, coming on to our next feature. By the way, if you guys didn't know which UI kits these are, these are free UI kits from Envision. So you can go to envision.com and go to the resources section and they've got around five to six resources and UI kits that you can definitely download and start using. It's pretty cool. I'll leave a link down below in the description if you guys are interested. All right, so let's say that I have a couple of elements over here. So these are colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and select um, all these colors and I'm gonna come to the assets panel and I'm just gonna go and choose click and you know apply all these colors i'm going to do the same for the typography um oops select all of this and then choose character styles and here in components um I'm, I'm going to do only a few because if i select all of those or actually i think i can do all of those let's see and add as a component oh it makes everything as a component so i guess i would have to just maybe pick a few and then choose add a component oh i have to individually go select these and make these a component. So let's say I have three components. So I'm actually gonna explain two features in one thing. It's basically the same thing, but you guys will understand what the difference is. So if we go to share, I can choose invite to edit, which means when I choose invite to edit, I can save it as a cloud document and invite people to edit, which means it goes saved on the cloud and I can ask somebody else, another colleague of mine, if I go, let's click on continue, I have to save it to the cloud first. So I'm just gonna go ahead and then choose a name for this and call it tutorial. All right, click on save. Now you can add people over here and they're gonna get an email saying that somebody that I have invited them to 
access this document. Now, basically what's gonna happen is they can access all these assets. They can access all these colors, all these character styles, and all these components. Now, unfortunately, I can't log into somebody's account and show it. It's gonna waste a lot of time. So I'm gonna show you another way so that you guys will understand. So as you can see over here, this is saved over the cloud. So it's pretty good. Now, if I go ahead and let's go ahead and create a new document. So I can go to the home section. Let's go create a new document. All right, and here I can click on link assets. Now assume this is somebody else's computer, but in reality, this is actually my computer. So this is the first one, which is linking assets inside your account. And the second one is linking assets in somebody else's account. So if I go to link assets, if I have shared it to somebody else, it's going to come over here and it's going to say shared with you. But since this is my account, it's not gonna show it to me. If, but if it's somebody else's account, it's gonna come over here. That's the first one. And the second one is inside your Creative Cloud itself. So as you can see, I have Scratch Wreck Tutorial. I can click on that. And what that's going to do is it's gonna go ahead and populate all the colors, all the character styles, and all the components of that particular document. So for example, you're working in a big company and you have a bunch of products and you wanna use the same design system everywhere. You can create one Adobe XD document and link all the assets and you can use them in any project or any Adobe XD document they use. So this is a really important and really useful feature because it, it helps remain consistency. All right guys, up next is something that's very cute that is a polygon tool. So if you click on the polygon tool Y, which is this one, you can go ahead and create a polygon. Now, while you're holding it, if you hold down shift, it's going to make all the sides equal. But if you want to increase the number of sides while holding you can press the up and down arrow keys that's going to add and increase the number of uh, sides let's say i want to go for an octagon and you can obviously go and change the number here as well so you don't have to do it while you're dragging it i can say three i can say five i've got a pentagon and also i can give it some nice corner radius which is around um 20 and if I want, I can actually manually go and give the rounding to this myself. So that's pretty useful. And it's just like any other shape tool. You can go ahead and change the color. You can add in a stroke. A lot of things you can do. Uh, pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Okay guys, coming to the next feature is related to type this time. It's about some type features. So if I select this text that over here, I can see um, it has a couple of new text properties. So basically title case, I can, so once I type out something, I can change the format to uppercase, which means everything is gonna become uppercase. Let me vertically uh, center this. And if I want to make it lowercase, which means all the letters are gonna be lowercase. And if I wanted to make it title case, which means all the first letter of the word will be title case. But what if I want it to be reverted back to my original one? I want only the first letter because maybe I'm doing a paragraph and I want only the first letter in that sentence to be title case. I can just click here to uncheck it and I can go ahead and revert it back to its normal state. So basically these are like options that you can add. You don't have to choose one of these three. These are options that you want that you can add to your text. The next one is about underline. So this is pretty simple. It's underline. Now we also have strike through, so which is gonna strike through the text. But what if we want to strike through only particular words? I can select any particular words that I want and I can go ahead and strike through only those, which is a pretty useful. Same thing works for underlining as well. I can select any one and underline only those as well. All right, guys, so coming to the last feature, which is pretty nice and awesome. Uh, this really helps to create UI designs and prototyping for various different types of scenarios like real softwares, application, games, and so much more. So let me explain what this is about. So I've created a simple prototype over here. So if I show you the prototype and I've set the trigger to tap, which means if I tap, um, all these elements are gonna fly in, uh, you know, slowly. So that's basically it. But what if I wanna do this based on a keyboard command, all right? So when I tap on something on the keyboard, so maybe this is a user interface for a desktop app of a company. So what I can do is if I come here to the uh, prototyping, links over here i can click on it and i've set the trigger to tap now there's a new one called as keys and gamepad now for gamepad i would suggest you guys check out the video because it's about using a real xbox controller and a ps4 controller or a ps controller um and i don't have one of course so i can't show you but definitely do check that out but the concept is pretty much the same so keys is basically your keyboard i can click on keyboard and i can press on a key to assign it so if i press the letter p let's say 
this action is going to happen, all right? And I can't show you my keyboard at the moment, but if I go and set the duration, probably let's say to 0 0.4 seconds or something, um, I can show it to you. So now if I go and click on preview, uh, let's, oh, let's actually select this one and then got preview. All right, and if I tap over here, as you can see, you can hear my mouse, you know, it doesn't work. But if I press the P keyboard, which I am going to press right now, you can see that's going to happen. So I just press the letter P and that happens. So the same way you can link your controller via Bluetooth and then you can prototype. So that's pretty much it for the video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So until then, take care and bye-bye.